You ever hear about a hot new game or an indie title with a dedicated following and you think to yourself, I want to know what all that hoopla is about. My goal is to find out what makes that game engaging. Why are people playing it? I'm here to answer this question. What's in the game? This week I'm looking at a smaller game in a very small genre, but one that stands out as extremely playable with a bright future ahead. The good kind of bright, not the your tank has fire blasting out of it in six different directions kind of bright. Gunner Heat PC is a simulation of Cold War armored combat, but on the lighter end of the simulation spectrum. This is a game that gets the details right, but is also very fun to play. You could fire up the game right now and have mastered the basics before I finish this video. That said, this game is realistic and challenging in a lot of ways. The various tanks and other armored vehicles you can control span decades of technology, and these technological differences directly create fresh gameplay experiences and replayability. Understanding those differences is part of what keeps the game engaging for a long time. To be clear, this is a game that is still in early access, but you would absolutely get your money's worth by buying it today. I'm looking at the game here in early 2024, but new vehicles, features, and mechanics are being added on a regular basis. What you get in the game right now is a nice selection of American and Soviet vehicles and a huge assortment of scenarios to play them in. Some are quite small and simple, others are chaotic, multi-phased battles. Many can be played as either side. There's also a dynamic campaign that generates endless missions, though it's a bit bare bones at the moment. With all that said, let's jump into a few key aspects that I think make this game so enjoyable. Right from the start, the developers of the game, Radian Simulations, made it clear that they wanted this to be a simulation that is fun to play. As opposed to say, DCS, which is a totally amazing flight simulator, but only the most dedicated players will ever be good enough at it to have much fun. Gunner Heat PC is a breeze to control, allowing the player to drive and shoot with ease. The game injects heavy doses of realism in places that actually make the game more engaging rather than cumbersome. What model of vehicle you're driving will dictate what kind of weapons you have. Even more importantly, what kind of fire control system you have. That is to say, how easy it is to see and aim at things. On one end of the spectrum, you have the advanced M1 Abrams tanks with automatic rangefinders and thermal sights able to highlight targets day or night. Simply hit a key and the onboard computer will put the next round exactly where you are aiming. On the other end, you have older tanks where you'll be eyeballing the range using either practice skill or hoping for the best. In between, you have some really fascinating low-tech solutions like the optical coincidence rangefinder on one M60 variant, which requires the gunner to adjust the focus of two images, sort of like focusing binoculars, until the target lines up perfectly, indicating the correct range is set. This is how the aiming worked in real life. It adds to the simulation aspect, but it also neatly translates into a tense gameplay mechanic. This sort of dynamic makes driving each vehicle in the game a unique experience, as they all have their own quirks to explore and master, while sharing the same basic set of controls. Fortunately, each new vehicle comes with a training scenario that gives you instructions on how to aim and fire its various weapons. Building up some skill with a given vehicle is highly advised if you want to be effective at all when the real shooting starts. Speaking of that, let's focus on some shooting and explosions next. Gunner Heat PC is a treat in terms of both visuals and audio. The immersion factor is dialed way up as you see and hear battles play out. Looking through the gun sight, lining up a target as you see rounds arc their way towards you before throwing up sprays of dirt really adds intense pressure. Just knowing any one of those rounds might wipe out your tank makes every shot count. Showers of sparks explode off armor rounds ricochet into the sky, and of course fire gushing out of a vehicle indicates a sure kill. Adding to this, sound effects for every round and explosion are perfect, sounding different depending on the range, whether your view is inside or outside the tank. There may be no sound more satisfying than the Bradley's 25mm chain gun chugging away at one Russian APC after another. The star of the show, however, is the incredible voice acting for your crew members. In terms of being a simulation, these voice lines serve a very real purpose of passing information about the situation to the player. You'll know when a target is spotted and where, when a round is ready to fire, and when the tank commander thinks you've knocked out an opponent. In terms of increasing the immersion and fun factor, these voices are off the charts. Crisp, professional statements ratchet up to tense and sharp, and straight on to desperate screaming, depending on how bad the situation is looking. When you consider that life or death might hang on how quickly you let the next round fly, it makes sense. 
Let's hear a few examples so you can witness it for yourself. It's rare to get dialogue like this that adds so much to the experience through sheer emotion. It really caught me off guard the first time I played, and it continues to enhance the gameplay even after hearing some of the same lines many times over. In juxtaposition to the brutal reality of the combat being portrayed, the landscape you fight across is downright beautiful. It's interesting to think about war being fought in idyllic landscapes like this. In the movie Fury, which featured World War II tank combat in Germany, the world was extremely grim. It always seemed to be overcast, muddy, and sapped of color. This was of course an art direction that the movie deliberately used to convey a certain tone. However, the reality is that by the end of the war, Germany would look much like how it is portrayed here, vividly green and alive. I like the contrast of beauty and ugliness, it makes for a realistic presentation of war, and it gives you something nice to look at before the shooting starts. After the shooting's over, there's one more unique feature that I always find worth checking out. Win or lose, you get a game over screen where you can cycle through every single hit from the battle. Here you can directly see the detailed simulation going on every time a round strikes a unit. This view reveals why some tanks just wouldn't die. Maybe the angle was just a bit off and the rounds were being stopped or bouncing. More often, you'll see why a single round took one of your rides out of the fight. It's probably because the round penetrated and then split into a few dozen pieces that tore right through the crew. While there's no blood or gore, it doesn't take much to imagine the mess some of these impacts would have left behind. This is an early access title that's already a lot of fun for the relatively low price point, but there's a couple of huge features on the way in addition to ever more vehicles to control. The first is an expansion of the campaign. Currently, it's just a bunch of randomly generated skirmishes that are not really connected. The developers promise that eventually, the campaign will feature strategic decisions and force management. While that's not a lot of specific information to go on, I think it will give the game a ton of replayability, as the core gameplay is already so good. Having a larger framework to give each mission more meaning and context would be perfect. The second, very exciting feature which will be coming eventually, is the addition of multiplayer. Just imagine rolling up on a picturesque village knowing your buddy is out there somewhere hunting for you. Alternatively, imagine you and your friends manning the various stations of a single tank with one person as gunner, another driving, and a third sitting in the commander's seat. Sounds like a recipe for both a good time and a disaster. Even if the AI in the game improves, the idea of rolling a platoon of tanks down a road, knowing that one of your friends is commanding each one, sounds like an unbeatable experience. That's all some distance off in the unclear future, but I trust the team will get there. Currently, the developers manage at least one sizable update every month, adding new vehicles, missions, and features as they go. I'm really glad I found this game, because there aren't many other tank simulators out there these days. Yeah, I know about World of Tanks and the like, but those are just not quite the same as what you get here. Never mind all the grinding and microtransactions you have to deal with if you want to play with the best tanks. Forget about that. Here, you can jump right into whatever vehicle you want. The developers do say they'll eventually do expansion packs as DLC once the base game is done, but they won't be asking you to shell out $50 for a single tank or anything like that. So at the end of the day, if you thought this game looked fun to you, you're almost certainly going to be right, and I highly recommend giving it a spin. While the presentation is very realistic, the controls are easy to learn, and you'll be zapping T-72s from a kilometer away in no time at all. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep seeing features like this on cool games that I find, uh, just hit that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Fire. 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 Fire.